Hey everyone, welcome back to Satisfactory News. This video is sort of a follow-up to my manifold versus load balancing video. First of all, I never expected that video to be so popular, and it's cool to see it be one of my most viewed. But despite my attempts to be as thorough as possible when describing how manifolds and load balancers work, I overlooked a few important details about both. So this video is a follow-up that has all of the details you need to know to make your belt systems work perfectly. Let's look at some more details about manifolds first, then we'll get into load balancing later on. You can use the chapters in this video to skip ahead to that if you like. So, the main downside of manifolds, minor as it is, is that it can take some time to start up and saturate the system. These tips can help manage this downside. The first manifold tip is to make sure your main line is the fastest belt speed you have available for maximum throughput, but to use the slowest belts you're able to for each building. So for example, if you need 60 items or less per minute in each of your constructors along a manifold line, you can use a Mark I belt between each splitter and constructor. This will help each machine in the manifold line start up sooner because it limits the amount of resources that can be funneled into the first one, meaning subsequent machines will get their first items sooner. Alternatively, you can use only smart splitters rather than regular splitters. Obviously, this will be more expensive in terms of materials, but if you set each smart splitter to input items into the machine and then overflow the rest, you will completely fill up the first machine, then the second, and so on, until they're all full, and each of those machines will work at full efficiency just one at a time. This is especially useful for recipes that require a large amount of materials up front, otherwise your machines may be sitting idle while also hoarding a lot of materials as they all split up into all of the machines. The simplest and maybe most effective way to reduce the startup time of a manifold when you build it is to turn it on in stages. So for a basic iron setup, build the smelters first, then turn them on so that they start creating ingots. Then work on the next stage, let's say iron plates being made in constructors. While you're setting it up, the smelters will be processing ingots. So by the time the constructors are built, your ingots might be ready. Overall, it's not a big deal if it takes a few minutes to saturate a manifold system but it is the singular downside of this method. And starting up the system in stages can help alleviate this better than any other way. Thanks to all the great comments recommending these methods to make manifold even better. Now, let's talk about load balancers, which are more complex than manifold systems. And since they're so complex, I made a few mistakes in the last video and also missed some really important details. Okay, first I'm going to address a simple but important statement I made in the previous video. I said that you can use load balancing with any number that is divisible by two or three without using a loopback belt. And that was super wrong. No idea why I said it. I guess I said math was scary, then proved my point by doing math wrong. Based on my original statement, trying to make 10 even belts from a single belt is easy. And in fact, it's anything but easy. It turns out I kind of had the right idea in mind, I just couldn't communicate it in the correct math terms. Frankly, I don't do math for my job, and the last time I did any complex math was over a decade ago in college. I'm going to cover a couple more things about load balancing before we get to the revised rule though. That does bring us cleanly to some more details about loopback belts. In the previous video, there was a very important detail that I failed to mention. For those who don't already know, the loopback belt is how you create an effective load balancing system that needs to create a number of equal belts that cannot be achieved with splitters alone, such as five. To do this, you go up to the next number that can be split evenly, and in the case of needing five belts, that would be six. And then you put the excess belts back into the start of the system to be split again. What I didn't mention is that the input belt cannot be fully saturated, otherwise this won't work. So for example, a Mark V belt capable of transporting 780 items per minute that has 780 items per minute on it cannot support any loopback belt because it is trying to take on more materials than it can support. In the five output example, the loopback belt serves as an artificial sixth output, but instead of outputting it into a machine, it spits it back out onto the main input line. That means that one sixth of the input loops back into the input. In this case, that would mean 130 extra material per minute is trying to combine with an already saturated 780 belt, and now the entire system will get backed up and you won't be sending enough resources to each of your machines. Mathematically, this system means that you'll be sending 156 items per minute to each of the five actual output belts, but this backup means you'll be getting significantly less than that. Let's look at an example that does work. 
Say you're trying to create 5 belts of 60 materials per minute. In this case, your input is going to be 300 per minute, assuming your factory is perfectly efficient. Your loopback belt should be putting 50 back into the system, so you are effectively inputting 350 per minute. So Mark IV or Mark V belt will be plenty to handle this throughput with no issues. With this knowledge about how the math works, and with the limitations of loopback belts in mind, let's now create a more advanced rule of thumb for how to create a load balancing system that takes these details into account. If you need a number of belts whose prime factor is 2 or 3, you don't need loopbacks. To know this, basically divide the number by 2 or 3 until you no longer can, or when you end up at a 2 or 3. If you do, you do not need loopback belts. To determine how to set up this system, you just need to start with your desired final number of belts and count up, adding one at a time, until you reach a number that meets either of the rules mentioned before. Let's take 10 as an example. Divide by 2 to get 5, but then we cannot divide by 2 or 3 any further, so we count up to 11. That is itself a prime number, so no dice. But then 12 can be divided down to both 2 and 3, so it works. So you can create a system with 12 even belts and loop back the other two. But now you have the challenge of those two loopback belts. Being aware of the fact that you could oversaturate your input belt by using loopbacks, you might realize that trying to add two belts back in could be detrimental and really limit how much we can input. Well, luckily, having two loopback belts actually makes this decision easier. Our system of 12 belts can actually be seen as two mini systems of six belts each. At the very beginning of the system, we split the initial input belt in two with a splitter. And then we split each of those into two, then split each of those into three, resulting in 12 belts at the end. So, if we just grab one loopback belt from each half, we don't have to return those all the way to the beginning. We can just loop them back to their own half of the system. Simply add the left half's loopback belt to the left half somewhere after the initial splitter, and then add the right half's belt to the right half, again after that initial splitter. This puts far less strain on the input belt, and actually allows us to use a 780 belt at full capacity. Because that first splitter turns this into essentially two mini systems of 390, that being 780 divided by 2. 65 of that 390 needs to be looped back into the beginning of the system, meaning each mini system only needs to handle 455 items per minute, which a Mark V belt can handle with ease. Now note that this only works because we can divide our two systems into two identical mini systems. It might not work in every scenario, but just remember that you're trying to make things as even as possible. So all that said about loopbacks, several commenters actually mentioned a much easier solution, which is simply to, in this case, make 12 machines and underclock them, instead of making 10 machines and making a complicated loopback system. And yeah, this is much easier. However, it's at the cost of taking up even more space by creating more machines. Adding that to the fact that load balancing systems already take up a lot of space, this might not be attractive to everybody. But it is just another option in your arsenal. Either option is totally valid, and there truly is no wrong answer, as long as you're having fun. Here's one final tip that may or may not be useful, and I actually ran into this one myself. If your load balancing system just isn't quite working out, likely because the flow is pretty light or the machines are running at a variable level of efficiency, you can create what I call an overflow loopback belt. Essentially, you will pick a point on each of your final output belts and put a smart splitter on them that captures the overflow, then sends that overflow back to the beginning of the system. Basically, what this is doing is setting a maximum backup distance on your output belts. It can help smooth out any variance by putting items back into the sorting system. Note that this should not be necessary, but sometimes the system just doesn't work how you think it will, and doing this can help fix a broken load balancing system. Or maybe just give you some peace of mind if you're worried about it not working. Okay, thank you so much to all of the many commenters that pointed out these extra details, inaccuracies, and other things that I missed. I hope this video serves as a good sequel to that initial video, and helps you understand both manifold and load balancing a little bit more. Remember, fix it doesn't waste, so I'd hate for you to have to rebuild your systems just because I led you astray. If you liked this video, please like it and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video.